Yo, ¿Cómo están? Bienvenidos. And if this is your first time here, my name is Natalia and welcome to Cozy Bichota. Fields of Mystria has released an early access and no joke has become one of my favorite games so far this year and possibly of all time. I am a huge Sailor Moon, Stardew Valley, and Animal Crossing fan. My office is decorated with a bunch of collectibles and trinkets from all those franchises and so this game i feel combines all of those games together by picking out some of the greatest elements from them i am a long time farming sim girly and so tricks and tips videos are some of my favorite when it comes to starting a brand new game so here is my list of my tips tricks and some news I hope you've been enjoying Fields of Mysteria as much as I have been, and if you haven't started it yet or picked it up, I hope this video gives you a little introduction into some of the things that you can look forward to in the game and how to get started. But before we jump right into my tricks and tips, I want to be able to describe to you what Fields of Mysteria is first. Fields of Mysteria is a farming life sim RPG inspired by elements of nostalgic farming sims, much like Harvest Moon and Stardew Valley, with the 90s feel of anime style characters. Characters. In this game, you are tasked to restore the town to its former glory after an earthquake wreaks havoc and strange magic begins to flow through the land, all in exchange for a farm that you get to live on. Build the farm of your dreams as you discover magic, romance, and adventure. Now in this list, I put together 10 things that I think would be super beneficial to know as you get started in the game, whether as a farming sim newbie or maybe somebody that is picking up Fields of Mysteria for the first time and hasn't tried any of the game out whatsoever. I will note that Fields of Mystery does a really good job with its tutorials and guiding you along the way just so that you can get started with the game. It doesn't feel insanely grindy and that makes the game super cozy and very relaxing to pick up. Number one on my list are the tools. In Fields of Mysteria, you slowly obtain tools either through cutscenes and quests with villagers or through purchasing. You do start off right away with a sword since you're here to save the town. So to start off, I'll list some of the tools you can get through cutscenes. You'll soon get your watering can and hoe on day one in your cutscene with Celine and Hayden, and as well as some of the seeds. Basically, a little starter pack for farming. Aeland will give you an ax on day two when he needs help cutting down the tree in front of an interesting dragging looking statue. I won't spoil it too much, much if you haven't started the game yet. And by accepting a quest from Ulrich on day two from the quest board in town, you can unlock the pickaxe from him. You can purchase the worn tools if you feel like you want the rest of your tools. Or, in my honest opinion, being the better choice, reach rank level 10, unlock the mines, and save up on copper ore so you can just craft copper tools. The ore is easily available throughout the levels, and crafting them doesn't cost you a penny. Not only are they stronger than worn tools, but a more economical way of upgrading. And by the time that you have your copper ore tools, there's no need for the worn tools, so you can just sell them and make some money off of it. As with most farming sims, inventory can be oh so small. I think it's best to save up money to purchase the bag upgrade to gain more space. More space means more foraging, more items, filling up pockets with more minerals and loot from the mines, and less need to rush home or to a chest to store things away. Number two on the list is money and ways to make money in this game. This is a great way to lead into how to make money. Beginning game grinding can be tough as you start off with a small amount of money and everything is ridiculously expensive. In my opinion, foraging can be your best friend. I am huge on picking up everything I come across. I tend to get super distracted while I'm on my tasks for the day or trying to complete a quest if I run into something that I just want to pick up. I normally have a rule of thumb to save at least five of each item at the start of a game in case you ever need it for a quest or gift to further relationships. Anything additional I sell in the shipping bin. You can also make a trip to the beach and collect shells. This was very reminiscent of my early days of Animal Crossing where I would collect the shells and sell them to pay off my hefty loan from Sir Tom Nook. There is also the quest board. Accept quests to earn money and additional items such as seeds or clothing. Not only is this a great way to make money, but also a great way to further relationship with villagers. And to my knowledge, quests don't seem to expire or have a time limit on them. Accept them as you go whenever you can. Number three on the list is crafting and cooking. And yes, we get to talk and interact with Reese, who is bachelor number one. I think the crafting in this game is so cool. 
You can use the benches in town and not spend tons of money or resources building different types of benches for yourself. The three workbenches are by the building with a bell, maybe a school, the carpenter shop, and the blacksmiths to do metal work, such as upgrading your tools. And you don't have to carry the resources with you because it automatically connects with your storage. That is a major quality of life update and one that I love. Thank you, Fields of Mystria. I noticed that the benches had a few recipes already there and some more to unlock later on as you move up with your skills. This makes the game feel more welcoming and less grindy. I love grinding and farming sims, but finally having one that is more gentle on the grind is nice because it eases any stress and makes the gaming experience more cozy. There is also a recipe for fences if you want to start making your farm look cute. I am someone that likes to get the layout of my farm early on and design it to start looking like the farm of my dreams. Fences are also a great way to add some flavor and design to your farm and keep away weeds, branches, and stones from growing on your fields. Cooking can be done at the Sleeping Dragon Inn at no cost. Just walk up right to the kitchen and start cooking some of the recipes. Some recipes will be available to you through the quests and you can see what type of ingredients you need in order to make them. Recipes are a great way to make additional money if you want to sell them in the shipping bin or also just carry around with you once your stamina is running low. Number four on the list is jumping and swimming. I did not realize you could jump until I jumped into water. I don't think I have played a farming sim with jumping and swimming other than Fae Farm and it is one of those small details that makes the game more more immersive. Plus, a great way to get around town through shortcuts. Sometimes I don't want to wind around the paths or bridges, so I'll swim across. In the mines, you can even try jumping across to rocks to avoid having to break all the other rocks around you. There are also diving spots. One of the things I love the most about the newer Animal Crossing games was being able to dive for sea critters. You can do the same in Fields of Mystria and get some critters and more. Number five on the list is customization, aka how you can make your character look as well as outfits. I love being able to dress up my character in different outfits. You know how in Sims and Animal Crossing New Horizons you can save outfit presets to change into? Well in Fields of Mystria you can as well. How amazing is that? I already made myself an adventurer outfit for when I am fighting in the mines. All you have to do is access the menu. There is no need for a closet or mirror. The best part is that you don't have to craft outfits, but you can gain attire through quests. Another great reason to make sure to accept them and check the board daily. Number six on the list is leveling up your skills. Remember when I mentioned that cutscene with Aelin that got you the axe? Well, later that night, you'll have an interesting dream with that dragon statue. That happens to be where you can go to level up your skills by using Essence. Essence is obtained by doing different skills such as foraging, farming, fishing, mining, cutting wood, and so on. You'll notice some little purple orbs appear that you'll collect and a little chime sound. Visit that statue whenever you want to check if you have gathered enough Essence to level up a skill and learn something new. You can also check the status of your Essence as you're playing the game right underneath where your money is. Number seven on the list is the archaeologist dig site. Head toward the west part of town in the direction where the museum is and just venture off a little further west. You'll come across a dig site with this cute little tent and tools just sitting outside. I took one archaeology class in college and let me tell you identifying bones and the research we did in that class was by far one of my favorites. So the fact that this game has a site for you to dig up for artifacts is really cool. You can use a shovel or pickaxe to dig at the little mounds of dirt to uncover an artifact and head on over to the museum to donate. Don't forget to check it out daily. And while we're mentioning the museum, to me, it feels like a combination of Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley. There are different sets where you can donate crops, fish, bugs, artifacts, and more to unlock rewards and watch the museum grow. Number eight on the list is probably my favorite, and that's the mines and magic. I am putting these two together for a good reason, mainly because in order to unlock some magic, you need to go further in the mines. And because I want to keep that spoiler free, that's all I'll say. As the game progresses, there are spells to help with farming tasks, such as watering and even restoring stamina, which comes in handy when you're in the zone mining and all of a sudden have no energy to break another rock. As the days go on, you'll get a letter that lets you know about the quest to open the mines. It reminded me a lot about Stardew. In order to access the mines, you'll need to reach a rank of stone, which is level 10. So make sure to keep up the work by farming, foraging, clearing up that farm of wood and stone and completing tasks. And much like Stardew and other mines, the elevator is broken. 
so you'll need to fight some monsters and make your way down each level by unlocking a way down, aka a ladder. Every five levels, there's a checkpoint and you can take the elevator to reach those checkpoints. Before going to the mines, make sure to stock up on some food to restore health and stamina. The monsters are oh so cute and I felt really bad fighting them until they attacked back, hence me needing the food. Number nine on the list is the Saturday market. On day three, there is a cutscene with Baylor, Nora, Adeline, and Reese, where they are talking about the destroyed bridge. Remember the one you entered Mysteria through with Baylor on that first day? It's impossible to forget that lovely encounter. You'll be tasked with helping gather stone and wood to restore the bridge by dropping it off in the crate next to it. Once that is restored, there will be a market every Saturday and new villagers for you to meet. During the Saturday market, there will be tons of things to shop. Food, furniture, accessories, and more. It changes every week too. So if you really want something, don't hesitate and buy it up. I am definitely enabling you to spend some money and make sure to save up each week for Saturdays just to treat yourself. And coming in last at number 10 is gifting. This quality of life feature is a great one. I already love how detailed the menu is. It shows you where NPCs are in real time, their occupations, names, portraits, birthday, and so on, and the items they like and love. So if you ever happen to forget and it's someone's birthday, or you want to give something to increase your relationship, simply click on the heart in the menu to go through the list. Another little touch I find really helpful is that you get a calendar early on without the need for paying for one. This calendar tracks all events and birthdays. And when it's an NPC's birthday, the load screen for the next day will actually show it. That's my list for tips and tricks to get you started in Fields of Mysteria. I have not been in the early access content of the game yet or gotten that deeply into the game. However, I have been able to glance over all of these things that I find super helpful to know early on as you're getting into the game and to be on the lookout for in case you happen to overlook it. The archeologist site, for example, being all the way on the west side of town, if you're not somebody that travels through all of town and gets distracted like I do wanting to get to know every little corner of a town and picking up forageable items can be something that's overlooked as well as other points in the game. I know there are spots where you can rejuvenate some health but I haven't gotten there yet and I want to be able to explore it first. So once I get further in the game and I encounter these parts as well as finally get to have animals on my farm I'll make sure to make a part two to update you with other things that you should be on the lookout for. And before ending my video I do want to read what the roadmap for content updates looks like as it was published by the devs not too long ago. This is the Fields of Mystery or Roadmap and the first chart talks about the major update coming in quarter four of this year. So I'm hoping the devs will be able to update us once that date has been figured out. Now, one of the things that they are looking into updating are the villagers in romance by increasing the heart cap from four to six hearts, having six heart events and some additional dialogue. In the mines and dungeons, we're gonna have some new enemies and new cosmetic drops from the monsters. Probably my favorite thing when it comes to fighting the monsters is getting cosmetics. Then for the town and renown, the level cap will be raised by 20 levels. We're gonna have some additional rewards and requests as well as content for the museum and a new festival. In the skills and perks, we're gonna have the skills cap raised from level 30 to 45, as well as additional perks. And lastly, in customization and cosmetics, we're gonna have some great home upgrades, player and animal cosmetics, furniture, and decor. For future updates, there are no particular orders for these, but it looks like every single one of the areas from this first major update will have even more things added to them, where we're gonna have hearts raised from eight to 10. We're gonna have events for the eight and 10 heart events, some marriage and children, as well as extra Saturday market vendors. They were already pretty generous giving us four, so I'm excited to see which new vendors they're gonna add. In the mines and dungeons, we're gonna have more biomes, dungeon quest line events, and unlockable spells. In Town and Renown, we're going to have a cap raise in the Renown level, quest and board request updates, and additional festivals. In Skills and Perks, we're going to raise that cap again up in the Skills area, as well as additional perks. And finally, in Customization and Cosmetics, we're going to have more home and farmland upgrades, player and animal cosmetics, 
furniture and decor, pets, and ability to ride large animals. Which makes me think of how Hayden made his way into the farm on his horse. I would love to be able to ride one around town. That is it for this video. I really hope you guys pick up Fields of Mysteria if you really like farming sims sailor moon or even just really want to pick up a new game that really takes the farming sim genre to a next level if you enjoy this type of content please make sure to subscribe and hit the like on this video for more cozy and gaming content and from one bichota to another stay cozy and see you next time adios